guys welcome to our channel once again today we are going to have a chat about incremental data load why incremental data load is so important in your ETL because you don't want to spend your time and money on something which you have already processed basically when your file size are huge in terms of volumes and in numbers so let's go ahead and see how we can apply incremental load before that we'll just clarify what do we really mean by incremental load with a small uh, demonstration so let's see suppose you have a data lake container where you have some data which are which have already flown as a first uh, load so first first 2020 you have few files and with your existing pipeline you have already pulled that data to your destination on the same day and you have also logged your success date as 1 1 2020 now you have figured it out on the second day you have got few more record as in few more files now those files are having last modified date as 2 1 2020 now you just want to process this new record which has come in instead of processing everything from the container and this is what exactly we are trying to achieve here let's go ahead and do our data preparation for this now what we are going to do is we have created a simple csv file which has six columns and it has data across year month and day now we will try to split this on two different files one which will have for the first load and one which is going to we are going to use for second load the first two records will be loaded as a first load and the last two record will be loaded as a second load now we have created a file which we are going to upload to a data lake As this is our first load, we are going to write our last success date watermark file first. So this is the command which we are using from the Databricks notebook. This way we are creating one watermark file with current UTC date. And now this is where we are loading our CSV file which we just now we saw. We are filtering on the sales day as one so that we can only write the first day of the file. So let it try it to look and then we'll see what we have loaded this is supposed to create one file for me in my source this is what we are creating as a source file now here you can see uh, one file has been created and we'll also notice the date time and this date time should be greater than my utc date which we created the bottom mark see what is going to be our algorithm before we go to the pipeline First thing first, get the last success date from our previous run. If it is the first first load, we'll take the, the time which we have loaded just now. Then we'll try to find out all the files which have been updated since my last load. We'll copy over those updated files and then again we'll reset our last success timestamp. These are the four activities which we are going to perform. So now we are ready for our first load. Let's go to our data factory pipeline. As we spoken about four different activity in the algorithm section, first part is to have a lookup to find out my last success date. This is simple lookup where you are going to pass the directory name and the file name. We'll load it. Then we'll set that value to one of the variable for further processing or filter. Now this is an important activity, get metadata activity. Here we are going to give a path of our source lake. This is a data set for the lake and we are passing the directory name where my file exists. Now here you see filter by last modified. Here we have we can give two values start time and end time. But this for this demo purpose we are using only the start time. We want to load all the file which has been modified since my last success of the job. Here are the attributes which you can select when you are using data. If you are giving a data set till the folder some of the attributes will not be available which are specific to files now we are selecting child items last modified item types item name and exist so we are not going to use all of them just for this demo purpose we have selected them we are only going to use the item name here because we have already filtered on last modified now the next activity we have is a filter 
here specifically we are using filter to find out which of the files are parquet file in case you have other file formats available in the same directory especially in case you have written the file from the database it creates some system files also which we don't want to copy over it will filter based on the file name which has parquet So once we have identified all the file which have been modified, we'll just run simple for each loop and we'll try to copy over this. Before that, uh, we are using one more get metadata. Here we are trying to identify in case we give a file path, the complete file path, because by now we know already the files. We can check few more properties of the file like size, column counts, and the structure. This can be useful specifically in case you have to have some more filter on the file size in some of the use cases we have seen uh, they say if you the file size is greater than some specified value only those files needs to be loaded so in those scenarios you can use some extra attributes for filtering Once you identified all the files which need to be loaded, we'll go inside if loop. We'll perform the copy activity from source to destination and we'll also update our watermark with the last success timestamp. So that next time when we run our job, we'll have the updated timestamp. We are ready for our first execution. Let's hit debug. And we'll wait for the execution to complete. I'll fast forward this. Now our run is complete. Let's go ahead and see what the limit last modified date has output as. So this is same as what we had already set at the beginning. Now we'll see. Well, this is the set variable. Now we'll see how many files it has found out. You can see all the properties which we had selected has come along with the child item. Now it says the file name success committed started so these are not the data file the data file is this one which we have identified which we are going to filter in the next activity so it has identified all the values its folder that is coming from incremental data and what is <coughs> last modified so these are all the <coughs> these are all the properties Now we'll see the filter one. The expectation is that yes, one file should be identified as a parquet file which we need to load. And the copy and rest of the things have gone as expected. Now we can see our destination. Here you can see one file has been copied. And to notice, uh, we have four files in the source. However, only one parquet file was there, hence we have got only one parquet file in the destination also. Now with this, we are done with our first load. Now we'll try to prepare our data for the second load. Now this time we'll use the same CSV file and we'll try to append an, another file. Yeah. Now you can see I have got one more second file. Now you can notice that it which is created with time. Now we have second file created. Now we'll try to execute our pipeline again and we'll see if it loads only the file which has changed. I'm going to execute my pipeline again. Now it is done. Let's go ahead and see the last modified date it has picked up from our last run. We'll check the metadata file, how many files it has identified. Yes, you can notice now this is a parquet file which was created in the second load. We'll go ahead and we'll check the file name again 717 and uh, no not this one yeah here we go so we have two files uh, second one which is created later on that has the same name so it has identified the file correctly so this is a parquet file which has come as a second load and we need to process it so it has identified it correctly it means it has loaded our files correctly we can go ahead and we can check our destination also here also you can see the second file has been created with a second modified time so we have two files which were loaded two different times one more thing to notice when you're copying as a destination uh, let's go to copy data and see a sync 
you should have a copy behavior as a merge file so that it gets on to, uh, it appends the file in your destination with this we come to the conclusion of our uh, demo thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more more such videos thanks